Yo, what's up everyone? Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Today, I want to go ahead and dive in and share with you all my process and thought process and just my general approach that I take to go ahead and taper in and out of lines. So with that being said, I will go ahead and provide you with a stencil down below that you can go ahead and print out on your end, or you can simply just kind of get a stencil paper and make lines like this. So I just went ahead and I uh, put these lines right here on a sheet of stencil paper. So again, you can download this below, or if you have stencil paper on your end, you can literally just get a ruler and probably freehand lines on there. And I just did them in different lengths. So we're gonna start off small, and as you can see, we're gonna work up to different taperings. So I'm going to just touch a base as much as I can, and per usual, just shed as much insight as I can on my flow and thought process, and which I take to go ahead and achieve tapering in and out. With that being said, yet again, let's go ahead and proceed accordingly. Now, for tapering in and out, typically when I do this, uh, when I am tapering in and out, I'm using a round shader or round liner. I could do it with both. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to show you all with an 18 round shader right here, long taper, and a quill cool standard 11 round liner. So you can use whatever you have on your end. You can use uh, five round liners, seven round liners, nine round liners, whatever you have on your end, you can go ahead and use that. Um, that wouldn't really matter, but what I'm trying to show you all is just again my flow and which I take to go ahead and apply tapering. So let's proceed. Let's open up the packaging and let's just kind of dive right on into this. I will also bring you up close here so that we can get a better angle at what I'm doing down here. So just to confirm, go ahead and download this then so you can put it on your practice skin. This is going to be real skin practice skin. I will also leave links in the description below for you. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be using my Ink Claw Challenger tattoo machine, as you can see right here. So with that being said, we are going to proceed. I'm gonna change the camera angle right now, and I'm gonna bring you all up close and just kind of speak out loud on the approach that we're going to take to achieve tapering in and out. For those who aren't familiar with tapering in and out, I'm going to show you right here up close with these lines right here. I'm going to demonstrate what it actually is. But for me personally, I feel that this is an important step that we must not overlook in tattooing because there's not going to there's going to be long lines that we have to tattoo into the skin. And we want to know how to correctly, if we can't pull that long line in one pass, how to go ahead and, you know, move the line and go in and out of the line accordingly. So that way it doesn't come out wonky. The idea is we want to be able to pull one solid line without being able to tell that we went in and out of that line. So tapering in and out, basically, there's multiple ways to go about it, I'm sure. And again, I'm going to share with you all the way that I go ahead and I go about it. And I'm just going to share with you my specific thought process just to confirm this isn't by any means right or wrong. This is just the way that I do it. So when I taper in and out, I'm kind of using, so when I go into the dermis, I find the dermis and that doesn't change. But what changes is when I am pulling out of the line, I make a whip out of the line so that way let me go ahead and show you here close, actually. Let's see if I can actually zoom in. So right here, I'm going to start from the top. Now, when I find the dermis, I begin pulling my line. And as I'm doing so, I'm going to taper out halfway through. I don't just pull up the line because I don't want any abrupt endings. So why I whip out the machine when I'm tapering out is so that way it creates this sort of faded edge right here as you can see as opposed to one abrupt stop and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to repeat the process but i'm going to start a little bit behind the line not too too much i'm not going to go over the whole thing again so i'm going to start right around here and when i do i'm not starting by finding the dermis i'm you know like a uh, whipping in this time so as you can see i start find my center and then when i find the center is when i commit to pressing down and I continue the line accordingly. And as you wipe, there's minimal no, or there's barely any visuals of, or indicating rather that this was done in two different strokes. So when we zoom out here, at first glance, it reads as this one solid saturated line. To me, if I were to see this line, it looks like a one pass line. Let me show you what happens and let's take a look at what the lines look like when we don't taper out or in so I'm gonna pull a line, I'm going to stop, and I just abruptly pulled out like that. And then I'm gonna try and repeat the process, just abruptly go back in.
Now the application in which I took made it still presentable. However, I can still tell right here in this area that I abruptly started and ended there, which to me, some may think that this would be better. However, please keep in mind that this is practice skin. On real skin, this area that we abruptly came in and out of is going to reflect in the surrounding areas right here. So you're going to be able to tell that I pulled in or I uh, stopped right here and then I went back in right here and continued the line on human skin. There's just going to be a little noticeable uh, something there. As you can see, kind of how I made that circle around there. You can still tell where I came in and out of. That's basically the results that we are going to get. That's kind of why I stay away from uh, just kind of pulling out. That's why I taper in and out of my uh, tapers here. So let me proceed accordingly here. So for this one, we're just tapering, um, practice tapering one time. And on the second one, on the second, as the lines get longer, we can basically taper more into the lines. So let's proceed and I'm going to begin tapering. So I find the dermis and then I pull, I'm pulling the line. And let's say I got uncomfortable right here. I'm going to whip the line out like so, causing a little fade like that. And that little fade, that little fade blends nicely when you taper back in. So tapering back in, I'm just going to start a little bit above the line and I don't put full pressure until I find the center. When I find where I'm going to begin, I commit and then I start pressing into the dermis. Or I'm um, sorry, putting the ink into the dermis. As you can see, we have one nice, smooth, saturated, cohesive line. I can't tell where I went in and out of, which is exactly what we want. And that's the idea of tapering. I guess in my head, that's how I look at it. You want to be able to have nice, cohesive lines. And we, I mean, this is again, for me, when I'm pulling long lines on people, sometimes I won't be able to make that entire line. So I use this method, I taper in and out. And for those who don't practice tapering in and out, it's definitely going to show and reflect in your tattoos. So I highly recommend that you just, you know, get a skin or two and just practice tapering in and out. I used to just do this for hours, tapering in and out exactly as I'm doing here with you on video, but just by myself before I ever had a YouTube channel or anything like that. And I would just do this for hours. I'm gonna go a little bit above the line. When I find my center is when I'm fully committing. And when I say find the center, that's pretty much essentially referring to lining the needle back up with the current line that's already existing. So tapering out though, after a while, like it does become natural. And for me, learning this technique makes for better artwork. It makes for uh, more quality work. So let's proceed. And then we're going to taper out. And then I'm going to taper in a little bit above the line. And then when I find the center, I commit and continue. Just like that. As you can tell though, the worst, the roughest one in my opinion is the second one there where we abruptly stop. So imagine the entire tattoo was being built and this right here was in every other tattoo. Like this right here, I'm sorry, this right here, forgive me. This area right here was in every other uh, line that you pulled. So let's say there's a lot of areas with long lines and this little blotch right here was in every other part of those lines it's gonna show it's gonna read when people look at it and to me that depletes the quality of the work that was done which is why the simple technique in my professional opinion is super important and often overlooked so let's proceed now to the longer lines so in this section right here what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull in and out twice of tapering here and that's what the longer line's for. And then the next one, we're gonna pull, out, pull in and out three times. And the last one, we're gonna pull in and out four. So you can kind of get my drift. This is gonna be a good practice to go ahead and help you keep consistent lines. So I pulled in and out the first time once. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a line here. We're gonna taper out like so, wipe away. And then we're gonna wanna taper in. Continue pulling our lines like so, taking our time. Taper out. Clean the canvas site or clean the tattoo site if needed. And then we're gonna taper back in and continue. So each line that we do, we're gonna be tapering a little bit more on that line to see 
if our tape room progress is getting better and if yours is coming out blotchy don't worry about it keep going just keep going and you know if you keep doing this daily and practicing tapering in and out eventually it's going to start showing within your work so you've got to be patient with the process and trust the process so we're going to hit the dermis and we're going to go in and every line can be different like i can pull a longer line up here taper out because in a real tattoo scenario no lines are going to be identical unless it's going to be a design that requires that so again we're going to taper in from a little bit above the line and before i hit that taper out part i make sure i'm already in the dermis taper out again and then we can go ahead and taper back in one last time here so as you can see right there very cool very nice very nice and saturated let me back that out so you can see so the lines are looking great and again we did multiple tapers within these lines so just to reiterate, you can get this little line stencil sheet in the links down below in the description for you. You can check out the real skin and everything that I'm using in the links down below. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to hit the dermis. We're going to go until we're comfortable. Taper out. Make sure that you wipe after every wipe or dab, whatever is your preference. And then we're tapering back in. We're in the dermis. Tapering back out, and we're going to go ahead and taper back in. We're in the dermis, and we're good. Completed line. And as you can see, the lines, in my opinion, aren't coming out that choppy. Like they're coming out really nice. I, if I didn't do these lines and I just read the tattoo on someone's arm or wherever the tattoo may have existed, I wouldn't have read it for choppy. I would have read it for nice, bold, like my my eyes would have naturally have gravitated towards the boldness of the lines over any choppiness that may or could have existed. So we're gonna repeat that process again. And I'm just gonna do this real time with you all. I figured we could just do this the entire way through. So we're in the dermis, pulling a line, taper out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna taper back in. And taper out. And what I'm tapering out is basically when I start getting uncomfortable. The signs, the first signs of me getting uncomfortable, I pay attention. And if I feel like I'm gonna wobble, then I'm just gonna pull the line out completely and just taper back in as you see what I am doing here. So we're gonna start a little bit above and then taper back in. Just like that and as you see we're getting nice consistent lines each and every time and keep in mind these lines are requiring or i'm doing these lines in three different sections it's not just one single pass even though we can do it in one single pass the idea of this video is to show you all my thought process on tapering in and out so we're gonna go ahead and taper out taper out and it's just repeating that process accordingly and right here on this part when i'm tapering in i'm putting little to no pressure upon doing so so for those who think i may blow this area out i actually put little to no pressure i actually come up here just to line it up and then i start putting pressure right around here to make sure that i'm continuing correctly i don't put pressure over what's already existing as i don't want to blow it out and i don't want to damage the skin which is why we are tapering in and out so as you can see, we're getting really nice, saturated, cohesive lines. I'm going to finish this out with this round shader right here, and then we will proceed accordingly. I will kind of demonstrate some with the round liner as well. However, the idea of tapering in and out is still getting across with the round shader. Uh, it's not going to change versus any needle you use. Uh, round liners would be the exact same application as well. And I still will demonstrate that for you as well. Just let's go ahead and get there as we get there. Now for this one, this one is a little bit longer than the, li the last lines over here are the longest. So for this one, it's gonna be the exact same thing, but we're just gonna take the tapering amount up a little bit. So we may taper instead of three times, four times on this one, and you get my drift. And I feel this is a great practice for those who are trying to get their tapering abilities a little bit more to industry standard. So as you see, that's one taper there.
Most two papers there. That's three tapers, and let's do one more. And on the last lines down here, if you're noticing, I'm not really tapering off down here at the edge because I always just picture this connecting to the next part of the design in the tattoo. So I don't taper there. I just act like if I'm going to connect it to another line, just kind of envision a line there. So as you can see, this line didn't come out that bad, actually. Let me zoom it out a little bit so you can see. It actually came out nice and saturated. And that was four different pools within this pool right here or within this line. That was four different... Um, tapers there as you saw so we're just going to repeat that process pra practicing tapers i think that the more tapers that are going to be in the line the more room there is for error so the more tapering in the lines the more harder it's going to be so to speak and that's just in theory how i'm looking at it so we're going to start hit the dermis pull the lines it doesn't matter where you stop and end as long as you get the amount in there so we know we need four tapers so i got one Two, three, four. So as you can see, it's four tapers in and out. And me personally, I'm happy with these lines. Like they read well. I'm looking for choppiness. I'm looking for blotches and anything like that wobble wonks all of that i'm paying attention to all of that and i'm i'm liking the standard in which these lines are coming out so we're just going to proceed with what we are doing here hit the dermis let's try a shorter one here taper in and out or taper out there taper in here taper out here continue this accordingly So we've got that going there. And then we're just gonna proceed. So that's four. I think I did four on that one. <laughs> I apologize if I didn't. We're gonna go ahead and continue. Now, also a big factor to consider on this line right here, on this last part, as you can see how it's a little bit less thick right here in this area. Now that actually comes from ink uh, not flowing in or not flowing out correctly. So if I'm correct, the ink flow in which I had in my cartridge was a little low for the line that I was gonna pull. So I should have just dug the tip of my needle into the ink cartridge or into the ink cap before I pulled that last line. However, just a simple pass like over the top, fixed it right up. As you can see, we still did another line. And then we're going to continue with the last one. But I am noticing, though, the more tapers that I'm putting in here, the more difficult it does become. So it is a good practice for those who haven't practiced tapering in and out. And it is very important. Like, I use it literally every tattoo. This technique, is, it's used every single tattoo. And when I'm tapering out and in, I'm kind of like using the tips of the needle. So like, let me put a little bit more ink in my needle tip. So upon tapering in and out, I'm using the tips of the needles. So as you can see, I have the feel of the needles. I see where the needle tip is. So then that's how I line it up. And I just begin pulling the lines like so. 
and then you taper out and you're good continue the process like so one last time start a little bit above So this is basically my thought process and this is how I go about tapering in and out. So as you can see, we have some nice lines there. And this one was four tapers. This one was, I think three. That first one was one taper. So we went one taper, then we went to three, and then we went to four tapers. And on this last line over here, I suppose we can probably jump it up to maybe about five since we did four in the last one. So for these lines, we're gonna go ahead and taper in and out five times here. So I'm just trying to set the camera up accordingly. So let's now proceed and let's get that done. So I'm going to find the dermis. And as you can see, when I whip out, my machine makes a like scoop up motion. I don't dig deeper before I uh, whip out. I simply, same depth that I'm at, I just pull it out from that depth. I don't dig any deeper at all. And I don't dig in right here while I'm tapering in. I'm just using, again, the tip of the needle to find the needle point. And then I start going down. And once I know that I'm gonna hit the new area, I put in, I put the needle tip into the dermis before I enter the new area. And that is what causes the line to be nice and clean. So I taper out, and I think it's the second one. And I go back and then I'm tapering in. And right here is where I'm starting to press before I hit the site where there's no ink. three and as you can see i'm literally just repeating this process i'm going back for more ink right now just to make sure i'm going to get a stable flow across the entire way and that stable ink flow is also everything as well because that's going to ensure that my line comes out cohesive all the way let me pull that out one last time I'm not sure that was five or six, but we're gonna just go ahead and do one more here. So you can get my drift like with that. Now versus round shaders and round liners, I think it'd be both equivalent. The smaller the needle, the harder it's going to be to hit the same spots. So tapering in and out, you may wanna be selective with the needles that you are using. I'm going to, again, demonstrate with a round liner, but for those who aren't experienced, I would recommend trying to start with the fattest needle configuration or the boldest needle configuration that you have available to you. <clears throat> so at this point, you can kind of observe my tapering in and out. As I've shared with you my thought process, I'm gonna go back for a little bit more ink just to keep that line nice and cohesive and stable. So as you can see, another nice, clean, saturated line here. And I'm going to show you these lines up close from a top view as well, just so you know that I'm not hiding anything over here. I'm wiping in front of you all, removing all the excess ink that exists on there, and the lines are looking great. You can't tell that I tapered in and out. So that's the idea, that's what you want. You, you're not supposed to be able to tell that you've tapered in and out, because like I said, like I stated, you would have blotches and uh, the lines weren't fully connected or they didn't connect and line up properly. And don't get me wrong, no tattoo is perfect. However, you can surely try to get it as perfect as you can, you know? And that's what we wanna do as tattoo artists. I think what's even cooler is like, you don't need a full on design to practice tapering in and out. You can literally develop the skill sets by just drawing lines freehanded on some fake skin that you have. Should you not wanna download the stencil, you can literally just get a pen and a ruler and draw some lines and then do what we're doing here. I think I'm naturally doing more than five tapers on each one of these lines, but I don't really, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, the point's still getting across. You're still being able to watch me real time. So you can see 
see another great line there. Let's wipe away excess ink. And as you can see, when I wipe away excess ink, there's still the line. The line doesn't go anywhere. So we are going to proceed here, tapering in and out. Find the dermis. I'm going to whip it out like so. I whip the needle in, whip the needle out like so. And then literally I'm just continuing that process. And on this next pass, when I whip the needle out, I'm gonna go back and refill the ink as I can kind of tell that the next one, the next line I pulled, if I didn't go back and get a little bit of ink, there would have been line inconsistencies. So let's proceed. Got uncomfortable. So as you see, another nice line. I like to um, remove the ink or here, the excess real time for you all. So you can kind of see it. And you know that the line, the passes that we're doing are first try and true to the core here. So we're gonna do this last line. So you get a little challenging right here, but it's gonna be a fun little challenge. So let's check it out here. So let me zoom you in and let's taper out with this last line right here. This one may come out wonky because I'm at the edge of the skin. But as I stated, it's going to be a fun little task to see if we can pull a nice saturated line. Oh, did pretty good in terms of saturating that line there we did nice with that so as you can see right here though we did pull the last line and we got that ink in there with tapering out multiple times so let me bring the camera angle up top and show you what these lines are looking like so here we are up close i wanted to show you the lines from a top view here and let you all really see them with the textures as well so that way you can see that uh, importance of tapering in and out now tapering in and out is a super important and it's a like I guess a minor technique which is why it's often overlooked however you could see though that the importance of being able to taper in and out so this right here just knowing this one technique provides me with another level of quality within my tattooing because you can never tell when I go in and out of the lines which is exactly what we want let's go ahead and go back over to the side angle and let's switch over to pulling some lines with a round liner just for those who are curious to see what that looks like so for tapering in and out with round liners, again, my approach is pretty much going to be the same. It's not going to be different. It's just like kind of the concept of lining with colored ink. The approach was the same as lining with black ink. So for this, I'm going to be using, again, the Quill Standard 11 round liner. And I'm going to demonstrate the approach that I'm going to take to taper in and out. I'm just going to taper in and out between these right here because I didn't uh, plan on actually demonstrating a uh, round liner, but I might as well do it while we have on the video here. So when I'm tapering in and out, and again, as I stated, the smaller the configuration, the more precise we have to be, the more accurate we have to be. So I would recommend starting with bigger configurations such as round shaders and or 11 round liners. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same. We're just gonna start, we're gonna pull the line, and we're gonna taper in and out. We're not going for like straightness of a line or anything, we're going for smooth tapering. 
So it doesn't matter if the line's straight or not, we want to go for smooth tapering just for right now. So as you can see, with the round liner, the process is the exact same. It really comes down to the personal application. It comes down to how precise you can put the needle tip. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. And again, I whip out the needle, as you can see, there's a trail right here and I kind of whip it it's too much sideways, but we're gonna go right over that so it doesn't matter. So as you can see, we're still getting smooth tapers with an 11 round liner. So tapering in and out, again, I can't exhaust how important this is. Uh, this is a very important fundamental to learn, I feel. And I'm not trying to teach you, I'm just showing you why I feel it's important. Because let's say if I didn't know how to taper in and out and I was doing this and, you know, I naturally just do a whip, uh, a whip out. But let's say if I didn't and then I go ahead and I go back like this and I do something else crazy. So what I'm saying is this little section right here is not supposed to be in the tattoo. So this, this right here is going to decline, in my opinion, the quality of the tattoo because this is not supposed to be there. You're not supposed to be able to tell that this line took two passes to complete. So that's kind of my thought process with uh, tapering in and out. Let's do that right here. Let's do a smooth taper. You can see we got like 70% there. Wipe away the excess and then I go ahead and I come back. And as you can see, we put more there and or uh, tapered in and out there and it's fine. It's a very smooth line as you can see. And so the idea is going, the concept is going to be the same for literally every single needle that you're using. However, the only thing that changes is pretty much the, preci the precision and the needle point size. So the smaller the needle point size, the more accurate you are going to have to be. Me, really, I never, I can't even think of a time or a time that I can see myself tapering in and out with a three round liner or a five round liner. Um, that's not something that I would probably do or feel comfortable doing just because, again, those needle points are just super, super fine. So I would probably taper in and out or um, just taper in general with any round liners above seven. So I would taper in and out with even double zero seven round liners and up, if that makes sense to you. I'm going to do one more right here. And then let me taper back in as smooth as I can. As you can see, a very nice, smooth, solid, saturated line. And that was with the Quill 11 round liner. This was a standard 11 round liner. What I think would be cool just to kind of demonstrate here on camera would be to demonstrate tapering in and out with a three round liner. So I'm going to suit up and I'm going to taper in and out with a three round liner for you all. Now, just to confirm, this isn't something that I would do in an actual tattoo. I am just curious myself to see how easy it would be to taper in and out with a three round liner. So I figured I might as well do it on video with you all here. So let's proceed. So you can see that we're at a very, very fine point. Like that is a super fine line. So to taper in and out from a line like this, you would have to be super precise or you're gonna be able to tell. So as you can see, you can kind of tell where I went in and out right here on this line. Although it still looks decent, it's still a decent line. However, I can still tell where I tapered in and out. Let's try it again. So you can kind of see where the smaller the needle configuration, the more difficult the taper becomes. So as you can see, I'm not really getting a cohesive line as I would like, but the lines would still read nice. But still, I would still want a bit more standard than that. Let's dab. Something like that, it's getting better. So as you can see, it's definitely possible. I personally don't see myself ever doing this in a tattoo. But if I had to, knowing how to taper in and out with a small needle like this and just kind of putting some practice in, probably can't hurt. So I just want to do a few more real quick. Just let me do a couple of more. So 
so that's how I would taper in and out. So if I'm using a smaller configuration, let's say if I needed to, okay, so I needed to taper that line in and out. I'm gonna start from kind of up here. I'm not pushing down. I'm just kind of scraping over the skin to help me find my beginning point, as you can see, the point where I'm going to take off from. So that's pretty much how I would approach smaller needles is I'm going to taper in and then when I'm uncomfortable, I taper out and then I'm going to barely be at the top so I can see my needle and then I just taper in where I need to, creating a smooth, nice line as you can see right there. So tapering with smaller needles is definitely a bit more difficult and challenging. However, you can definitely see the points that I was trying to make and you can kind of make out the I, uh, the ideas in which tapering in and out in smaller configurations, you can kind of make out how it becomes more difficult, so to speak, sorry for that there. But nonetheless, this is the approach. This is kind of my thought process and tapering in and out. It's really um, more of a practice and something that we have to develop into. I do feel though that being able to taper in and out with pretty much any configuration that's required within the tattoo design is going to provide you with a better quality tattoo. Now, I figured I have a CNC police seven round liner long taper right here. I figured I can go ahead and demonstrate with the seven round liner long taper. So that way we can see what the round liner long tapers look like upon tapering in and out. And I figured we can kind of get the idea there and close out the video. So allow me to demonstrate here. So you can see tapering with any needle though, if it's done correctly and you do it smoothly, the lines look great. The lines can look really nice and it could be done with essentially any needle. I'm not sure about mags. I wouldn't really taper in and out with mags as I don't really line with mags ever. I don't, I will never line with the mag. That's just me. Others are great at it. But for me personally, I think that um, tapering or, you know, lining with shaders and, um, Lining with round shaders and or round liners is the way to go for me. But nonetheless, so you can see how this is going to be the CNC police seven round liner long taper. And you can see if it's done correctly, you can still get a nice smooth line. So overall though, I hope that I was able to share and shed some light with you all on the importance of tapering in and out. Allow me to bring you all to a top view here after I clean this pad so that way we could take a close look at the lines and the details here and the textures of the lines that we pulled. So as you can see here, the taper is up close and all of them are nice and smooth in my opinion. I can't really tell when I started and ended within these lines now, now that a little bit of time has gone by. But overall, this is the idea of tapering. This is my thought process and this is the approach that I take to go ahead and achieve tapering in and out. I personally feel that this is a very important aspect of tattooing that we shouldn't overlook as it will make for better quality tattoos. And again, that's just in my opinion. If I didn't touch base on anything specific or if there's something specific that you may have wanted to know throughout this video, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. I encourage you, drop a comment down below. I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. I do have social medias all under the same name. So if you're not, be sure to go ahead and give me a follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Again, as I have social medias all under the same name at Daniel Yuck. That is going to be D A N I E L y-u-c-k i would genuinely appreciate the support don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as i will be bringing more videos like this thank you for tuning in yet again y'all have a great day